Hey everyone, welcome back. Just a quick recap before we get started. In the last episode, we have Rasen beating up the Mushroom Monster, figuring out that he can absorb mana from eating the Veridin chocolates, and making swift work of the Sixth Son and his older brother Carlton. We cut back to the scene where Hera and Hampton are gossiping. Hera asking him, are you saying that he's been preparing for his 10th birthday? A dropkick like him perfectly hiding his true nature this entire time? Do you think this makes sense at all? Hampton responds, I think he's been purposely hiding it for the last 10 years. And Hera responds, you're pretty amazing to believe that. Hera is not convinced, but Hampton says he clearly saw that he had completed the first circle and asks her, do you think that he can achieve this in a matter of a couple of days? Hera is still not convinced, but Hampton says, just think about it. The seventh young master has never been discussed as a succession candidate because of his behavior, but now he's trying to make his move. But thinking, this still doesn't make sense. But the only other reason Hampton can give is because he's the seventh shadow. Hampton desperately wants to believe in the seventh young master because they both share the same fate of being discarded if the young master dies. Since they're both going to be discarded if something happens to him anyways, he says we should just cooperate instead. And before he can get his sentence out, he gets cut off by Hera saying that if he decides to visit the library anytime soon, I'll think about it. We cut back to the scene with Rustin in the library facing Evian, but he's unable to remember who she is from his past memory. But using his divine eye ability, he can clearly see that her name isn't Evian, but Larvian. Rustin didn't expect her to be there, because she wasn't an individual that clashed against the protagonist, but she is one of the highest ranking magicians who appeared in a few important events. Most notably, she's the monstrous magician who slaughtered the Revenant tyrannical lord and his knights. Her ice ability being so powerful that she single-handedly froze the Revenant castle. She is so powerful that she's later known as the near natural disaster because of the events that took place in the North Sea War. She's currently a wanted person, but she's working as a librarian in the Maiden clan. That's probably why no one's managed to find her up until now. The library is basically a holy place for magicians because of the original transcripts and grimoires collected from all over the world. But out of all the librarians, why did it have to be Larvian? Why is that legendary witch who's rumored to be able to freeze you with eye contact in front of me? When asked to wait at the table on the second floor, all Rustin could say is, okay? And she tells him that she'll prepare some tea for him. In that moment, he has a flashback to his old self and thinks, thank goodness he never came to the library as his previous self, as that would have been disastrous. On the second floor, when asked what kind of book he's looking for, he responds that he's looking for one related to mana cultivation, and is asked what kind of mana cultivation. He responds, one that's geared towards beginners. Larvian, using her magic, instantly pulls the book, which flies over to Rasen. As Rasen opens the book, Larvian disappears as fast as she appeared, in a blink of an eye. Mana is a term designated to all kinds of energy existing in nature. One has to accumulate mana in their heart and create a circle in order to become a magician. More rings equals more mana, hence more mana equals more power. As Rustin starts reading through the book, it starts off by saying, Largo's 8th equation theorem and Prado's 7th mathematical formulas are required for this, and that's why the solution is E648, and quickly, he realizes that reading the book is hopeless. How this is the fundamentals? He doesn't know. It seems like it's impossible for a person to learn magic on their own. A field of study incomprehensible to Russin, but suddenly he has a thought. What if he can use his divine eye ability? Using the divine eye ability just in case, he realizes that he can't read the book, but he can actually analyze it without reading it, making it look like a download on a computer. Within short notice, a notification pops up saying, Analyzing introductory magic analysis completed 22% of the analysis, and divine eye can't be continued due to the lack of mana. Deciding that he should stop here for today, thinks that he's going to perfectly understand this book after he reaches 100%, and decides that his priority is to solve this mana issue. Back at the castle, we're greeted by Hampton at the front saying that Lady Soso is visiting. Lady Soso, that's his mother. He can clearly see her standing on the balcony. We get a quick flashback to Russin growing up, and we find out that he has a mother complex. He lost his mother at a very young age and was practically an orphan. 
Rasen's current mother, Lady Soso, was a mirror image of his real mother, but unfortunately, she too had a disease called the Azure Dots. As both Lady Soso and Rasen sit across from each other, no words come out. Given the awkward situation, Rasen decides to be honest by saying, Um, mother, I don't know where to start. Meanwhile, Hera is trying to understand if Rasen was really a bastard or if he was just pretending. What is Rasen's true goal? Suddenly, Rasen apologizes, pours his heart out for his past actions, saying that he grew up a bit and the past wasn't really him. He apologizes for everything he did and his mother simply lowers her head and listens to Rasen's word. As soon as Rasen had finished apologizing, Soso gets up from her chair and she says that she has to do work and leave. The Azure Dots was a mysterious disease where three blue dots would appear on your chest and there is no known treatment in this world. And if three dots appear, it's incurable. But as the writer of this novel, he knew the treatment. As soon as Soso leaves, she bursts into tears. But Russin calls her and says that he will prepare Carrington Vine tea from the Shapeland Mountain Range. And so let's have tea every day at this time. And to this, Soso agrees. Carrington tea. This special tea is not commonly consumed, but if you drink it regularly for over a month, you can cure the Azure Dots. Given Russin losing his mother, no matter how much of a bastard he may be, he will cure this disease. The next day, he calls for Hera and says that he's going to tell her something important. Her first thoughts were that her identity was discovered, or if Russin was going to give her an assassination order, but it was neither. Rasen says to get as many high-quality Veridin chocolates as she can get her th hands on. Do this, she thinks. Go figure. But he says one more thing. Also, get me the candies from the Rudon Bakery. Hera is lost for words. The power of money and authority is incredible. Hera was able to procure an equivalent of $200 worth of chocolates and candies within an hour. All the chocolates varied in quality, with the most expensive being about 30,000 rand each and the cheapest being about 10,000 rand each. With this, he found out that he can also consume mana from the candies from the Rudon Bakery. Judging from how he can gain mana from both the candy and the chocolate, he deduces that there must be a common ingredient. So he calls out to Hampton to go get the baker from the Rudon Bakery. Within the next moment, he finds the baker standing in front of him wondering, why was I called? Was there something strange in the food? Thinking he's the one who beat up the only daughter of the Marshall clan, he could easily kill a nobody like me. The baker hopes that it's nothing. Rasen says, um, and hesitates for a moment. And the baker responds with, yes, young master. And when Rasen asks the baker what he had put in the candy and to tell him everything, the chef drops to his knees, apologizing, saying sorry that it was a mistake, but Rasen just wanted to know the recipe. And so the chef starts to recite the ingredients, which included sugar from the Dorothy region, thousand-year herb, corn syrup. And as soon as the chef was done reciting the ingredients, the only abnormal ingredient was this herb powder. And at that moment, he realized that it must be this thousand-year herb, and if he can eat this, he can absorb the mana. Back at the training annex, Noah the admin is frustrated because people keep coming and asking about the seventh young master. He only has two things to say. He defeated the mushroom monster with combat magic, and that he recovered from the side effects of the magic combat with the mana's embrace spell from the healer. But suddenly the healer runs in asking Noah if he had heard of the news. The seventh young master beat up the sixth, and that it was causing an uproar because of how much he pummeled him. Noah's in shock. That nut job, how did he? When did this dropkick accumulate that much strength? Even if it's combat magic that develops fast, there's no way. But the healer suggests that it's because of his 10th birthday coming up. Maybe he put in some effort to show off before them. He was really, truly strong. This would mean that he defeated the 6th without proper mana activation, which doesn't make sense at all, because normally mages have skills like Blink, but there's no way he would have access to that skill at his current level. He also says that even if the magic combat's initial growth is fast, it's obvious that there would be a limit. 
He also states that you can't pass the Grandal of the Marshall Clan, and it also interferes with the activation of elemental magic, so that it's abandoned a study that no one learns. That bastard should know about this, and that magic combat is no good. But back at the state, Rustin can be seen happily chewing on that thousand-year herb and gaining mana from it. His theory was correct. Now he can consume the mana without the extra calories. Because of the chocolates that he had eaten for the last 10 years, there is mana condensed in his own fat. This means that if he trains hard and exercises, by breaking down the fat, he may have access to the mana as well. If his mana increases, the Divine Eye ability can be active for longer. With that, he can learn mana cultivation and grow way more efficiently. And three days later, he finally finished his book. Instantly, he receives a notification saying, creating the arrangement of the Great Sage Albert, and revealing the hidden place of it. It also told him to find the book, Basics of Magic, Easy Mana Cultivation, the 77th book of the Great Sage Alberto. He thinks that if he wants the second book, he's going to have to go back to the library again, and honestly, Evian is scary and he shudders at the thought of having to get involved with that ice witch. As Rasen is deep in thought, we see Hera standing on top of the ceiling, spying on him. Even though Rasen is scared to go back to the library, he musters his courage and decides to look for Evian, thinking it feels a little bit chilly inside the library. As quickly as she appeared the first time, she appears behind Russ and scaring him. Rustin composes himself and returns the book to Evian, who takes the book and throws it behind her and the book goes flying off, returning itself. She then asks Rustin if there are any other books he's looking for. He asks her, do you have the 77th book of the Great Sage of Riddle? Basics of Magic, Easy Mountain Cultivation. She says it's in the library and Rustin asks for it. However, she tells him that this book is classified as a B rank because the content is interpretable and non-informative. And to this, Rasen says that it's fine because he's just going to read it for fun. Suddenly, Evian leans in and smells Rasen. This feels as if a predator was eyeing its prey. Evian says that there's a nice scent on Rasen. Realizing that she probably smelled his chocolate, he offers Evian the chocolate he had in his pocket and asks her if she wants it. But playing hard to get, she says no, but if you want to give it to me, then I'll accept. After handing her the chocolate, he decides to leave, but not without saying something flattering. He tells Evian that there's a lot of chocolate at the Maple Next where he's staying, so she should come by from time to time and that he'll save some chocolates for her. Back at the state, he gets started on his new book right away and ends up completing 42% in one go before he runs out of mana. Thinking about what Evian told him about the basics of magic, it feels as if Alberto was telling him that if he wants to become a great mage like him, you'll have to learn the basics as well. Thank you all for dropping by. If you like this content, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one.